Hello everyone and welcome back to my introduction to C series. Today we are going to be covering arrays. So let's go ahead and jump into it right now. Okay, so last time we left off with loops, and we're going to actually expand on something that loops can be useful for today. So before we jump into this, let's go ahead and add something to our program real quick. Let's say that we have some numbers that we want to average, right? We'll say int number one equals 56, int number two equals 67, int number three equals 14. Okay. And let's say, for instance, that we want to uh, get the average of those numbers. Obviously, the average is where you take all the numbers, you add them all up, and then you divide by the number of entries that you have. And so we could come in here and say, well, our average, which would be a float, right? Because we might get a fractional value here, would be uh, number one plus number two plus number three divided by, uh, we'll say 3.0. And I'll say 3.0 so that we have a float somewhere in here, right? And I actually need to name this average equals. Okay, so uh, we'll say we have a float called average that's equal to the numbers added together, whoops, divided by 3.0. And these parentheses here are just to say, let's add these up before this division takes place. Okay, now this is certainly a valid way to do this, but it feels a little bit impractical, right? Because if we have a large set of numbers that we actually want to perform an average calculation against, this is actually gonna get out of hand really quickly. Let's say for example, this was 50 or 100 numbers, then we're gonna have all these variables here that we're gonna have to deal with, right? And so we actually want to do something where we can handle a number of integers sort of all at once. That is what is known as an array. Now, an array is basically a sequence of data elements, all of the same type, that are arranged contiguously in memory, so that's back to back to back to back, in such a way where you can access them quickly and easily just by looping through them. And so, where we've declared separate variables like this, these could be you know, sort of anywhere in memory. But what if we were to declare this as an array? Like how, how would we actually do that in code? Well, we might have an integer called numbers, but instead of just setting it to something, we'll actually use a new notation that we've not yet used, which is the square bracket. And inside of this, we'll say how many elements or entries we want in the array, how big we want the array to be. So in this case, let's go ahead and set three. And this is the syntax for that, right? So we're saying we have uh, numbers, which is an array of integers. And we denote that by passing this three uh, in between square brackets. To change these to actually set what's called the elements of the array, we actually need to do what's called indexing the array, which is using a particular offset from the start of the array to actually obtain a number. Because remember, this is an array of integers. So this no longer represents a single integer, but represents three. So we've reserved space for three integers at this point. So instead of doing this, we'll say numbers now, and then we'll index the first element of the array, which if you recall the discussion before about zero indexing things, this is where it becomes really important. Because the first element of the array is always zero, not one. If you start off at one, you're actually wasting memory because you're not using that first element even though you've allocated memory for it. So your first element of this will be at index zero. So the way that you do that is similar to the syntax up here where you're saying how big we want it to be. In this context, we're saying what element we want to index. And then once you've done this, now you're dealing with an integer and you can say, okay, well that equals 56. And then we can actually copy pasta these numbers, or these lines rather, and we can just change the indices or the indexes to one and two. So we can say number sub zero, number sub one, number sub two, and then we can set it to uh, 56 
67 and 14 respectively. Okay, and this is a, a much cleaner way to handle this, right? Because if we wanted to add another one, all we have to do is set this to four and add another line down here. I'm not gonna do that for now, but just to show you how powerful this can be. Okay, so we can get rid of these. And now we have our average here, right? So now we can say, instead of number one, we'll say numbers zero plus numbers one plus numbers two. And let me expand this out a little bit so we can see better, okay? And so um, this is a little bit better, right? But I think we can actually do better than this. I think, I think we can actually do a lot better than this. And so, you know, this is more flexible, but this line here is not necessarily more flexible. So what are some of the ways that we could potentially handle this? Well, since the first step of obtaining an average is to add up all the numbers, we could create a integer variable and keep a running total, for example, right? So we could say int total equals zero, right? Because we haven't added anything to it yet. We want to initialize it to, to zero, okay? And then we can actually just reuse this loop here. I'm just going to move this above our average real quick. We can reuse this loop that we actually had before from print number. In fact, I'm going to remove print number because we don't need it anymore. And instead of print number in here, I'm going to say total plus equals numbers sub i. And what this is basically saying is since we are incrementing i for each iteration of this loop, we can use that as our index to obtain the number at that current index in the array. So we can actually obtain our running total by just indexing the array this way in our loop and adding as we go. And then down here at the bottom, we can actually eliminate this portion completely and say total. So let's go ahead and build this and run. Oh, you know what? We didn't actually put any output. <laughs> Let me change that real quick. So let's change this to average and we will percent %f for floating point and say comma average, okay? And then we will rebuild one more time, run, and we see that we have an average of 45.6x, which looks to be about correct given these numbers. So I'm pretty satisfied with this, right? This is a lot cleaner of a way to handle this because we can set any number of elements here that we, that we want and we can reasonably get away with it. So how could we easily adjust this to sort of be a little bit more dynamic, right? Like right now, if we were to want to add a, an entry here, we'd have to increment this number, increment this number in the loop, increment this number as well, and then add the entry here, right? So how could we make this a little bit better? Well, we can introduce a constant variable. And a constant variable is basically something that you introduce when you have a variable that you don't want to change, right? Once you assign a constant, it's that value forever. It can never change. There are certain scenarios where you're actually going to need a constant. And one of the places you'll need that is when you're defining the size of an array. And so that works out perfect here. So we'll say constant uh, count equals three. And so anywhere that we have three, we're just gonna replace that with count. So we'll replace it there, we'll replace it here, and we'll replace it here. But bear in mind, we actually had this uh, set up as a 3.0, right? And now we're replacing this with an int, which is gonna mess up our division. So we're gonna need to cast this to a float to make sure that our division happens properly. And so now if I build this again and run, we see that it still runs properly. Okay, so we're a little bit better off because now we can say, okay, well, let's set this to four. Let's come in here and add a new entry at index three, and we'll set this one to 99. Okay, this should bump our average up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and make and run. And now you see that our average is 59. And so this is one of the many ways that arrays can actually be useful. And we're actually going to dive into arrays a lot more as time continues, but this is just meant to be sort of a simple introduction to at least fixed size arrays. There is something called dynamic size arrays, 
but I'm going to table that conversation for a future video because there are some other complexities and things that need to be introduced before we actually get to those. So the last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to arrays is how to pass an array to a function. So let's go ahead and define a function down here. We will say it returns type float and we're actually gonna move this average calculation over to that function. So we will say get average. Now, one important thing to note about arrays before we move on is C actually has no way to, of determining just from the array itself how large it is. What I mean by that, for those of you that have used uh, C Sharp or Java or one of those languages, a lot of the times you could just say, you know, dot length or something like that, and the arrays will actually tell you how large it is. C does not have anything like that. So in C, you actually have to track the size of the array along with the array itself so that you know when you're iterating through it how large it is, right? And we've sort of gotten away with our iterations and whatnot by using constants here, but that's not always gonna be a saving grace for us, right? So we need a way to handle that. And so the proper way to handle that is always keep track of the size of the array. Um, or the length of the array as, as it will be called a lot of times. So in this function, I'm first going to say we need an integer, which we're gonna call length. And we also need the integer, uh, which we're also gonna call numbers. And we're gonna use our square bracket notation, but note this time I'm not going to put a number in between the square brackets. And that is because when we are passing it as a parameter or an argument, we do not have to specify the size of the array, right? And that is why we need to know the length, right? Because we won't actually know the number of elements just from this alone. So we'll need this additional information to actually be able to parse through it. So we'll go ahead and flesh out our function. I'm gonna go ahead and take a copy of this signature and put it up here at the top, okay? Followed by a semicolon. All right, what I'm gonna do is take all of this code and I'm gonna cut it and paste it in here. And instead of creating a new float called average, I'm just gonna return it because this is actually going to give us a float. Our return type is float, so I can just turn it uh, directly. So I'm just saying return total divided by count. Except in here, I don't really wanna use count, right? Because this could change and I want our function to not be hard-coded in any way. I want it to be a little bit more flexible than that. So instead of count, I'm actually gonna use length here and here. And this will allow us to process any number of numbers that are in here just by passing the length along with it. So it makes this very dynamic and easy to use. So in order to go ahead and utilize this, we'll now say uh, get average. And to that, we will pass count, which up here we're calling it count, but that's actually the length of the array that we're looking for. And then we're gonna pass numbers, okay? and You'll note that uh, this variable here is called numbers and the variable here is called numbers. These do, these do not have to match one another. Uh, the names just happen to be named the same thing, but as you can see here, this one's called length and here it's called count. So all that matters is that the types match, right? So we have a length, which is an integer, and we have a numbers, which is an, an array of integers, okay? And so our get average is returning a float. So we need a float average and we will set that equal to the return value of get average, right? So we calculate this here, return it, it gets set to average, and then we use that in our printf here. So if we go ahead and build this one more time and run, we see that our average is 59. So now we can actually very easily go up here and let's change this to five, add another entry. And now we only have to change things in two places, right? So let's just, change that to 2000 and change the index to four. Go ahead and build it again. And when we run it, the average is much, much higher. So this is how we can make things dynamic and reusable in such a way where we don't have these hard-coded quote unquote magic numbers all over the place, which are numbers that just sort of came out of nowhere, right? And that's kind of what these are. We're just using these as our test data, so it's fine in this case, but we don't want to limit like our loop or our length to hard-coded numbers, right? So this allows us to be fully dynamic in that way.
And really quickly, we've talked a lot about clean code, and I just want to touch really quickly on something called comments. Comments are a freeform section of text that allows us to describe things that are happening. And we start off a comment with a double slash, and a double slash basically means from here to the end of the line is a comment. So don't process it as code, it's just a note to self, right? So we can say here, um, create an array of numbers, right? We can say here, um, get and print the average, okay? And comments are a great way to sort of make a note to self as to what all the code below it is doing. It's a good habit to get into to create comments in your code. And I know we haven't really done it thus far because we've been using really simple examples, but it is very, very important to use comments throughout your code because when you come back to it in six months and look at it, you might not fully understand what you're doing. And so it can help you sort of solidify what a block of logic does when it's not obvious. Now here, uh, you know, this function is called get average. So it's pretty obvious what this does. So we may not need to add a comment for that. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of bring that up. So that's gonna do it for arrays for this video. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and go ahead and click the little notification bell there to get notifications whenever new videos in this series drop. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.